here at the Funky Little Chair in St. Paul and today we are going to show you how to use ply grip which is uh, this metal bendy stuff that you might have seen. Um, it is a modern alternative to hand stitching. They can really work well with some of your heavier upholstery fabrics um, and it's also going to tend to be quicker than hand stitching. And we have here one of our practice wing chairs that's going to be a perfect place to show you because one common place that you see this is to close up um, curved outside edges such as you find on a wing chair. So in order to get started, um, we'll walk you through our materials. Uh, first we have ply grip is what this is called um, from my supplier. You might see it called Curve Ease or by some other brand names. To cut that, I'm gonna use a tin snip. So you don't wanna use your regular shop scissors. I have a rubber mallet. A selection of kind of basic hand tools. I prefer side cutters my scissors, my C.S. Osborne staple lifter, and then this, a regulator, which is actually um, a traditional upholstery tool, but it's going to work really nice for us uh, for ply grip, and you'll see as we get going why. And then lastly, I'm going to have a pneumatic staple gun, um, which is going to be a really great tool for this. And I actually have a couple of staple lengths, um, 10 millimeters is my standard, and then a longer one to get through some of our thicker layers. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So my outside wing is already prepped up, meaning that I have burlap on here to create support for my padding. So I get to jump right in at the step of attaching our ply grip, which let me show you how this works. Um, one half of this has teeth on it and the other half has a hole to staple through. So down here, I'm gonna end up hammering this edge closed so I'm not real excited about this being a cut sharp edge. I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to cut that through a hole. And I'm just going to take that piece off. So then when I come back to hammer, I'm not going to be hammering against a cut edge that might cut through my fabric. You can use ply grip without a welt cord, but it really works best if you run it along welt cord because that's going to give a little, a little ledge, a little barrier. So I'm just going to stick that right behind my stitch line and each of these is going to get one staple and this takes a little practice. You have to get right through one of your holes there and that staple needs to be secure. If you don't hit anything, if your staple hits the metal and it buckles or you staple into a void, you're going to want to pull that out and staple again. Let me show you, if I accidentally get excited, I see students do this a lot, and I start stapling it back in here, and it's not tight to my stitch line, when I hammer this closed, I'm going to have exposed staples and, and strips. So it is critical that this rides right along behind your stitch line. As we come up here, you can see this is really what ply grip is designed for, is to bend around these curves. So we wouldn't necessarily use it on a straight edge where we have some other techniques that would be a little straighter, a little more efficient, but this is ideal when we're closing up a curved edge. All right, and as I come up here, oh, I get my tin snips. So that leaves me up here just a little bit short. But I would rather be a little bit short than risk having my metal ply grip sticking off this exposed edge. The next thing we're going to do is come along and just bend this halfway closed. Now today we are using a nice heavy fabric which is going to be great for ply grip because we have to hammer on it. All right let's get some padding on here. this padding 
up along our ply grip, there I do like to staple. And I want to staple right behind my ply grip. So it's going to stay right against that curved line. And with a perfect glue job, that maybe would stay there for us, but we want to be sure. So now the goal when we trim this edge is to trim it right along the edge of our ply grip. We have our perfect trim here is that our batting will cover that metal strip, but not get sucked into this teeth. Because you can see we only have about a half inch mouth on our ply grip, and if we start filling that up with batting, we're going to have trouble getting it to close down tight. So that's why I like to staple here, because it just gives me a little more precision in placing my padding. Alright, we're ready for some fabric. Here is my outside wing. So I'm going to put just a few staples down under here. The reason I start those stapled edges is because ply grip really is easiest to work with if you have something to pull against. So now comes our little regulator. And this is a great tool, even though that's not what this is really designed for. It's great for getting in here. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start at this corner up here and just make my way out. It's a great tool for just tucking your, your fabric right into your teeth and I can just follow it along. Now some fabrics are going to want to slip out if you're working with um, something that has a sheen to it or it's not very heavy. This fabric is beautifully cooperative. It's just going to slide right in there and grab on our teeth and I can see like live active as I'm working if I'm getting any puckers or anything strange and it's just going in nice and smooth how we want it to. Good, so now I'm down that way. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start tucking out to the back. And at this point, let's say, let's say I did get a big bubble in there or something. At this point, it's very easy for me to just pop it off the teeth and retention it. After this point, it's going to be a little harder to rework, so I want to take all the time necessary to make sure that that's positioned how I want it. So that looks pretty good to me. So let's come back to the corner. And the reason we're starting here and traveling out is that really I don't want to work my way into the middle and then discover that I have extra fabric that I have to deal with. If I start here and work my way out, I can just make any extra fabric whoop, disappear into my arm or into my back. So I'm going to start again back at this corner and I'm going to get in here and I'm just going to start trimming and I want to trim tight enough that whatever's left will fit into that half inch mouth of my ply grip. If I trim too tight, it's not going to want to grab onto those teeth, especially if I have a lighter slippery fabric. But if I have too much, if I have too much, I'm not going to be able to get this closed up nice and tidy. Now I'm just going to do a little bit there and show you what we do next. So make sure that that's tucked in there. And I'm going to press things closed. And then my last step is that I'm going to get in here with my rubber mallet. And I want to support because you can see this whole wing is really kind of free floating. And this is an older chair that's been reupholstered a few times. So we want to be gentle if we can. I'm going to support with my spare hand as I get in here and I hammer that closed. And that should clamp up nice and tight. Now I like to work in, if you have a nice fabric like this, you really could trim the whole thing and then start hammering. But I kind of like to work in stretches just to know that now this is hammered closed. That's not going anywhere. And then I can start working into the next section. So we kind of have four steps when we get our fabric in here. We're going to tuck our fabric in. We're going to trim it down. 
we're going to press it closed and then we're going to hammer it. And on long stretches or tricky fabrics, I just like to work in, in pieces. So I'm going to finish up this whole wing. See, I got it trimmed. I got it tucked. I'm going to press that closed. And this is also, this gives me a chance to just keep an eye on what's going on, see if my wealth is getting sucked in there, or if I have any exposed staples that I need to stop and deal with. But if everything looks good, we'll just get in and hammer it closed. edges are in and we like them and we've hammered everything down then I go back and I'm going to revisit my straight edges because it's time to pop those staples and just retension this into its final position and patience, but it's a wonderful technique to have in your skill set, so I hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm.